Context. Context is AO3 in English literature. And I feel as though personally, context is a little bit, it's, it's sold a little bit over the top. As in, you must do so much context. You must talk about great chain of being, regicide, religion, gender, class, how many kids Shakespeare had, what university he went to, everything for context. Now, a typical English literature essay is worth 30 marks. A1 is worth 12, AO2 is worth 12, AO3 is worth six, and AO3 is your context. Now, in the typical English literature essay, you're doing four paragraphs. Now, we've just established that context is worth six out of 30 marks. Six out of 30, which means it's 20% of your grade, 20%. But a lot of people treat context like it's a hundred percent of their grade and they try doing context in every single paragraph and they go crazy over it. If context is 20% of our grade, six out of 30 marks, six, 12, 18, 24, 30. What that means is we do do context. Of course we do context, but out of the four paragraphs as a maximum, we do it twice. Maximum, we do it twice. And therefore, guys, in this video, I'm going to give you two pieces of context that I bet my entire house, life, car, business, everything on. Two pieces of context that can be used for every English literature question. Everything education. Tuition for maths, English and science. First piece of context, guys, I've written nice and clear is the context of patriarchy. Patriarchy can be used in every question. What is patriarchy? In the most simplest form, patriarchy is a society that is dominated by men. Men are powerful, men are in charge, men are strong, men are in control. And as a result, women are weaker. Women are sexualized, women are treated as objects, women must obey the men. However, you can flip all this upside down. For example, in Romeo, sorry, in Macbeth, you can argue that yes, Macbeth is a patriarchal man when he's chopping the enemy and his sword is smoking with bloody execution. Tick, 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 tick. But then you can argue that Macbeth is also a victim of this patriarchy. Why? Because when Lady Macbeth calls him a coward, it's his patriarchal views. How can my wife call me a coward? I'm supposed to be strong and brave that motivate him to go and kill Duncan. It's because of patriarchy, Lady Macbeth can get away with pouring her spirits in thine ear because the patriarchal man was strong and powerful, but probably wasn't the brightest tool in the box. Now look at Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet looks at patriarchy beautifully. How? Everyone underestimates Juliet. Lamb, Mrs. Innocent. But because in patriarchy, men were strong, men were conniving, men were powerful. No one ever suspects that little Juliet is gonna meet Romeo, sleep with Romeo, get married to Romeo, fake her death. Because under patriarchy, women were absolutely lovely. And we can keep going, guys. We can go through all the texts. Look at Jekyll and Hyde. Where's the women? Where are the women? There's no women, there's two. It's the girl that gets trampled upon and the maid that watches uh, Hyde kill Saddam vs. Karu. There's no other female. There's no other women included. But then it shows you the flaws of a patriarchal society because in a patriarchal society, the men looked out for the men. That's why Utterson covers for Jekyll. Lanyon doesn't tell what he's seen. Everyone's covering for everyone else. Now, we can carry on going, guys. Inspector calls the way Eric treats Eva Smith, the way Mr. Berlin treats Eva Smith, the way Gerald treats Eva Smith. Yes, you can argue it's capitalism. Of course you can argue that. But also it's, ca it's patriarchy. And the deadliest combination, guys, is a patriarchal man who is a capitalist, is a patriarchal man who is rich. Because these guys get away with everything. Because they're already powerful because by default, they're men. You then add money and boy, oh boy, they do whatever they want. 
That is why, guys, this piece of context is lovely to use in your exam. But don't just say patriarchy is when men are powerful. Explore it. Just the way I have discussed, discuss that in your exam. And that is your first piece of context. Learn it and use it and you're done. Second piece of context. We're now climbing the ladder and we're going to get closer to grade nine. I've spoken about it forever. I always use it. I have always used it. There are model answers up on AQA where students are using it. And that is Mr. Freud. Please don't get lost in how to pronounce his name. His name is Freud. Don't overcomplicate it. And Freud, guys, he said, listen very carefully. This theory can be used for every single question. Why? Because this theory talks about the human brain. And the last time I checked, every character in every book has a brain. Now, what Freud spoke about the brain is what religious people also believe. Um, so some religious people, guys, they'll call it the fitra. Um, but these are your raw instincts. These are things that are there from birth. Now, Freud said that one instinct, one instinct that all of us have, that is there from birth, is called id. I-D. Id. That's it. That's all it is. Because I, I see kids trying to overcomplicate that word. He simply called it the id. This, he said, was our instinct of either survival and worship. Let's focus on the instinct to worship. He said that every human being has the id, has the instinct of worshipping something. Some people worship God. Some people worship cars. Some people worship houses. Some people worship people like celebrities and then you get some people who worship power like Macbeth you get some people who worship money like Scrooge and Mr Burley you get some people who worship their desires like Jekyll who creates Hyde you get some people who worship the devil and the evil side hence Hyde kills Sir Danvers Carew you get some people who worship themselves Mrs. Burling is a prime example. You get some people who change from worshipping their loved ones to worshipping money. Another idol has displaced me. Do you get my drift, guys? This idea of every human being having the id of worship, having the instinct of worship, can be linked to every text, every character that you do. And what you want to argue is that most characters can't control this instinct. For example, all of us right now want to be powerful. None of us want to be weak. But I hope we can control our instinct. We would hopefully not kill for power, not lie for power. But you might work hard and try to get a decent job and blah, 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 to one day be powerful. Whereas some people can't control this. Macbeth can't control this. Lady Macbeth can't control this. Look at Lady, look at Romeo and Juliet. They worship each other. And they cause absolute madness because they can't control it. They are willing to destroy their entire families for their pathetic love. Now, use Freud in your exams because it fits perfectly. If you get a question about the witches, oof, guys, the witches, what do they worship? Ironically, they worship evil they worship corruption they wor they worship chaos if you get a question about mrs burling mrs burling guys for me is a character who before anybody else puts herself first and then her husband what else if you get a question <coughs> on um let's say let's say jekyll and hyde if you get a question on utterson or if you get a question on the relationship between Utterson and Jekyll. These characters, these men, they worship their own status they are, because they're all quite rich, they're all quite powerful. And they're so obsessed with remaining in those positions that everything else, their dark and evil side, is an absolute secret. 
But guys, you can link Freud, you can link patriarchy to any question in your GCSE exam. Why? Because Freud talks about the brain and every character in your text has got a brain and patriarchy, every text, every, every text that you do has patriarchy in it because even today we live in a patriarchal society. These two contexts is all you need for your exam. You can use it for every single question. Literally, use it for Macbeth, use it for Christmas Carol, use it for Inspector Calls, use it on repeat and get the marks for context, which are six out of 30. All right, guys, I hope patriarchy and Freud helped. Use it in your exams, use it in your revision and use it in your paper one and paper two English literature exams. Peace. Everything Education, tuition for maths, English and science.